Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about another problem for finding a vector function or parameterization for the curve of intersection between the plane and then the elliptic cylinder. So as you can see, the plane is given here and then the elliptic cylinder is given here. So uh, we are going to do a really rough sketch just to visualize what actually is happening. We actually are not going to be join, join this too accurately, but then um, the join will actually help us understand what the situation is or what that curve of intersection is, right? So it will give us some idea. So first, we are going to just draw that. And to draw that, then we are going to first draw a plane, right? So I'm just going to just make a plane here. Um, when you actually draw it using a computer, it may not look like this, right? But um, we just want to see the idea here. So now, because we know that the um, the plane and the cylinder is going to intersect, right? So what happens is that we are going to have a cylinder that's um, that's going to the the plane and so what it looks like it's going to look like this so you have a cross section of the cylinder and then what happened is that we are going to just have this okay so let me just graph that and then we are going to be getting the cross section and then so if you look at the cross section here, we are going to be getting an ellipse, right? So this dash just shows that it's behind the, the plane. Okay, so that's what the whole situation is. And then we are trying to determine an uh, vector function for this curve right here. This is an ellipse right here. It's tilted, right? And it lies on the plane. Okay, so now um, what... What do we do to get started? First, we are going to look at the cylinder. And as you can see, the cylinder, if you look at its projection on the YC plane, you are going to get the ellipse, right? Because this, as you can see, if you just look at this without the X, when X is zero, what happens? We get Y squared plus four square uh, equals four, right? That will actually give us a an ellipse. And that's also center at the origin, right? If you just look at that projection. Okay, so first we can parameterize this. How do we parameterize? It's actually a easy one because we have an ellipse, so we can just use cosine and sine, right? So we are going to let, um, we are just going to let y be two cosine t, okay? And then the other one, the other one, the z is going to be um, sine of t. And then, of course, we can set a restriction for the t so that t goes from 0 to 2 pi, OK? Now, I just want to show you that it actually works when you plug it back into the equation, even though this is not part of the solution, right? So I'm just going to just show that to you here, which is that when you plug the 2 cosine t into the y, then you are going to be getting a 2 cosine t, right? And then square plus, now there was a 4 and then the z square, right? So you plug the sine of t into the z square, then you are going to be getting sine of t and then square. And then if you um, simplify this, then you are going to get the four. So as you can see here, just do it quickly, then you're going to get four cosine square t plus four sine square t. And so if you factor out the four, you are going to be getting four times cosine square t plus sine square of t. And then, so you know that cosine square t plus sine square of t is equal to one, so you're just going to get four. Is that okay? Yeah, so we parameterize the ellipse that we have on the yc plane, right? But that's not really the one that we want because we want an ellipse, right? That, um, that has that projection, but we also want the ellipse to lie in this plane, right? Because that's the curve in this section, and then the intersection should be lying on this plane. And so how do we do that? Um, so what we're going to do next is to plug this y and the z back in here. And actually, let me just point out before we do that, is that this portion of the work here, this is not really part of the, the work. It's not part of the solution. I'm just doing this to show you that it will satisfy this equation right here. So. Let me just remove this part because we don't need that. Okay, so 
So far, that's what all we have here. And now we want to plug this back into the equation and then see what's going on. Okay, so we are going to be getting a uh, looking at the equation for x plus three y plus z is equal to one. Right. So now let's plug let's plug those into the equation. So we are going to be getting four x. Okay, and then plus three times what the y. Right. The y is what the y is two cosine t. So we just plug that in here and then plus Z. Z is what? Z is the sine of T. So we plug that in here. And that's equal to what? That's equal to one. Okay, so all we need to do is to solve for X here. So we are gonna get four X is equal to, uh, no, four X plus six cosine t and then plus sine of t is equal to one okay so if we move those two turns to the right hand side then we are going to be getting four x is equal to one minus six cosine of t minus sine of t and then now if we divide everything by four then we are going to get x to be one over four minus six divided by four is three over two so we get three over two cosine t and then minus 1 over 4 sine of t. So now you have one more um, equation right here that's writing x as a function of t, right? So now you have the x, you have the y, you have the z. So we can put it as the uh, in the vector form so that we have the parameterization. Okay, so um, how do you put it? It's actually quite simple. So we are going to be getting... Okay, so that our intersection, so I'm just gonna use the same color that we have here, which is one over four minus three over two cosine t minus one over four sine of t. And then that's, that's yeah, so that's this one, right? And then we also have the y and the z, right? So let's just put the y and the z in there. So we get two cosine of t, this is our y component, and then Last one, the z component, which is sine of t. And then of course we are going to just set the restriction for the t. So t goes from zero to two pi, which is enough to trace the whole ellipse that we have here. Okay, and then if you want to write it in the parametric form, then you can just put the equations, all three equations together, right? So you get x equals a function of t, y equals a function of t, z equals a function of t, and then you have to set a parametric equations. Okay, so that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.